Welcome to section 3 of the Vertical Pump presentation. Here we will discuss the various methods of installation. The first method is the standard conventional way of installing the vertical pump. It is mounted vertically adjacent to the supply tank or scrubber sump with the overflow branch at the maximum liquid level as shown. When the outlet or suction valve on the bottom of the tank is opened, the liquid level in the pump will equalize with that in the tank due to atmospheric pressure, thereby covering the impeller, which is essential for the successful priming of the pump. The pump is then switched on and will deliver fluid to the desired pressure until the level in the tank is so low that air is sucked into the pump suction line, at which point the pump will stop delivering and will run dry until the level in the tank is restored. This process can be repeated indefinitely. The second method is the standpipe method. In this method, a standpipe is installed in the suction line via a T-piece close to the pump as shown. The standpipe diameter should be not less than the diameter of the suction line and must be vented as shown. The overflow line connects to the standpipe instead of to the supply tank or sump. This allows the pump set to be located some distance from the tank or when additional ports are not available in the tank. As before, when the outlet valve of the tank is opened, the liquid level equalizes in the standpipe and the pump to facilitate priming. The third method is the sump method. In this method, the pump is installed above the liquid level, so a priming facility has to be added. This is done simply by installing a non-return valve of the low resistance full flow flap type at the bottom of the suction line and a water connection for the initial prime, as shown in the figure. The water valve is opened and left running until the water starts to trickle out of the overflow port. The pump is then switched on and it will deliver to the designed pressure. The pump can be controlled via level probes in the sump. When the pump is switched off, the excess liquid in the delivery line flows back and automatically primes the pump for the next pumping cycle. Or, a solenoid water valve can be fitted to assist priming if and when necessary. The fourth method is a combination of method 1 or 2 and 3 and is designed for duty standby pump installations. In this method, the suction lines of the pumps are manifolded together, as are the overflow lines. Both are attached to the standpipe as shown in the sketch. Non-return valves are installed in each of the suction lines, approximately between 3 and 500 millimeters below the suction flange of the pump. It is recommended that the suction line be at least one diameter larger than is required by the pump, and it is also recommended that a water connection is installed in at least one of the suction lines just below the pump. The principle is that the overflow liquid from the running pump fills the standby pump and keeps it primed at all times and vice versa, facilitating quick and effortless changeover at any time, irrespective of the liquid level in the, pump, uh, in the sump or the tank. Popular duties for these pumps are scrubber recirculation, circulating through heat exchangers, ring mains, sumps, filter press pumps because of the fact that it can run dry or against a closed valve, and normal transfer pumps 